Um, okay, so my name is Paul Horn. I am a uh, probate attorney. I'm also a CPA. So today we're going to talk about Prop 19, property tax. Okay, um, we're going to talk about the good and the bad, the ugly, and what we can do going into the future to preserve our Prop 13 low property tax basis for yourself and for your children. Okay. All right. So let's get into it. Let's get into it. So. So this is my, oh, let me see. This is my PowerPoint. Um, let's get into my PowerPoint. Let's see here. Uh, let's see, I have never Zoom with PowerPoint before. So let's see here. Um, okay, here we go. Here we go, I'm gonna start this live in the beginning. All right, so Prop 19, okay. All right, so just to set the table, just to set the table, Prop 13 basically guarantees you a, cert, a, a low property tax base, right? It, it, it guarantees you a 1% property tax increased by 2% year by year, okay? No more than that. So for example, if you bought a house in the 70 for 100 grand, and now it's worth a million, your property tax is somewhere in the ballpark of 1500 right? If you went out right now and bought that, if, if someone else went out and bought that property, your property for a million bucks, they would pay property tax of 12500 But your property tax is still low at 1500 okay? So property tax is a big deal. That is the essence of your Proposition 13, okay? That's the essence of Proposition 13. So what we're saying is, all right, so you bought your house or your client bought their home a long time ago. And so let's say in, in the example you see on the screen, they bought it, say, 1970 for 100 grand. Their property tax is 1500 okay? Now, once they pass away and they give that house to their child, will their children, the child retain the old property tax basis, okay? So to set the table, that's where we're at. Prop 13 right now allows you to pay very low property tax, but when you pass away, that is gonna change. That low property tax is going to your child, big major changes to that. The current law is, the current law is, the current law is this, the current law, so on the screen, so on, oh, let's see here, on the, on the, on the screen, you'll see property tax from parent to child. So let's look at that for a second. Let's look at this for a second. On the screen, I'm comparing for you the current current property tax that's going to get passed to your children, okay? So Proposition 58, Proposition 193 anchors in the low property tax basis going to transfer to your, to your children, okay? That's Prop 58, Prop 193. But Prop 19 changes Prop 58 and Prop 193. That's what we're going to talk about today. Okay. So for example, on the screen, you see this is the quote unquote bad part of Prop 19. It's going to mess with your, when you pass down these real estate to your kids, to your children, in one form or another, it's going to affect them. If it's a rental property, it's gone. If it's a rental property, no more exclusion. You have 10 rental property, all those 10 rental properties gonna get reassessed. Bam, comes February 16, 2021. That's your Prop 19. That's the change it's gonna make. That's the change it's gonna make to the existing law of Prop 58. Prop 58 says, hey, right now, let's say you bought a house for $500,000 and now it's worth 
five million and that's your primary resident, it can go to your children, no problem. Prop 19 changes that. Prop 19 says, hey, that the home, the primary resident you bought for 500,000, now is worth 5 million. When it goes to your children, it's gonna get reassessed, even though it's your primary resident. And the formula, the formula is capped at a at a at the assessed value plus a million bucks. Okay. So even your primary resident exclusion passing down to your kid is gonna get messed with. It's gonna get messed with. If it's your pro for for you to pass down starting February 16th of 2021. For you to pass down the old property tax basis, three things gotta happen. It's gotta be your primary resident, it's gotta be your child primary resident, and they're only gonna give you the assessed value plus a million bucks. Okay, so a lot of changes. We'll we'll do a deep dive into some example. We'll do a deep dive into some example. Okay, we'll do a deep dive example. And we're gonna get into some planning too. If we wanted to get ahead of this Prop 19, what are some planning tools that we can do now to preserve our property tax basis? So super, super important, okay? All right, can you all hear me okay out there? Because uh, I think you can, okay? So say something if you can hear me. All right, great, okay, so, all right. That's the good part of Prop 19. <laughs> That's the bad part of Prop 19. That's the bad part of Prop 19, okay? We'll get into the detail of it just a little bit. Right now, I'm giving you the roadmap, the roadmap of where we're going in this webinar, okay? We'll get into the good part. We will get into the good part. And the good part, oh, let me see, where is the good part? The, the good part is, if you're age 55 or older or disabled, okay, you are now going to be able to carry your old property tax basis and you can go buy a new house and carry the old property tax basis with you, okay? And you can do that up to three times starting April 1st of 2021. So for example, the good part of Prop 19 says, I bought a house for $200,000 in 1970. Now it's worth 5 million, for example. Okay, the good part of Prop 19. I'm 65 years old. I bought a house for 200,000. Now it's worth whatever, 5 million, okay? But this house is too far from my son, from my daughter. You know, I wanna move toward near my son, my daughter who lives by the beach, who lives wherever. But I don't want to, again, if I buy a house near my son, my daughter, it's going to be a $3 million house, a $4 million house, and I am retired, and I cannot afford, you know, the increase in property tax. The good part of Prop 19 says, hey, hey, no problem, Paul Horn. Go ahead. Go ahead. You can do it up to three times now. You can go ahead, and if the value of your current home is $5 million, no problem, Paul Horn. You can go ahead and buy another home of equal value or greater value, okay? Uh, we'll just assess you on, on, on the delta, on the difference. So for example, I bought my house for 200,000. It's worth 5 million. I'm paying very low property tax. I can go buy another $5 million house and pay a measly, you know, $2,500 property tax. It is going to be terrific for it's, it's supposed to increase inventory. It's supposed to, you know, if you're a realtor, you should be all over this, okay? It's gonna, you, you're gonna be able to help senior citizens who wants to up downsize their home or move closer to their family. This proposition is terrific. You say, hey, Paul, but Prop 60 and 90 currently does this already. That's true, Prop 60 and 90, it's only limited to 10 counties. Now you can go all over California and you can do it three times in your lifetime. Okay. Yeah. And then now you can buy and now these senior citizens can upgrade their house and then they'll just be, they'll just be assessed on the, they'll carry over their old basis 
plus the delta change. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's the good part. That's the good part. So now, and then, and then what we're going to do to close out the meeting, what we're going to do to close the meeting, we're going to look at some planning tool. We can look at some planning tool, you know, prop 19, it's going to hit us. Prop 19 is going to hit us. And there's only, oh, let me see. There's only a, only a limited, there's only a limited amount of time only that we can use it or lose it. Meaning like, oh, so, so we know Prop 19 is going to take effect February 16, 2021. So what if I wanted to lock in my Prop 13? What if I want to preserve my Prop 13 to my child, to my children? What can we do? Okay, we'll get into Prop 19 planning. There's a limited window for action, use it or lose it. We'll, we'll, we'll get into that, okay? All right, so, so now, so someone asked, what is the delta change? What is the delta change? All I'm saying there, guys, is this. On the good part of Prop 19, on the good part of Prop 19, remember the good part of Prop 19 says, hey, I am 55, you know, I'm 56 years old, for example. I'm 56 years old. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm 56 years old, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm 56 years old. I bought a, oh, let me see here. I bought a, um, I bought a $200,000 house. I bought a $200,000 house. Now it's worth $5 million. Now it's worth $5 million. I can go ahead and buy a $6 million house. And I'm only getting, so my property tax of 200 grand, that old basis, I get to carry up. And I'm only gonna reassess between the five million and the six million. That's the delta I'm talking about. Okay. All right. So, okay. So now let's go into detail of the law. Let's go into detail of the law. And then once I run through all this, then we'll take question. Okay. Then then I'll take questions. All right. So let's start. Let's let's start. Let me go to my let me go to my slide. Okay. So so let's let's see here. Okay. So. So let's take a look at the good part of Prop 19. The good part of Prop 19 allows someone who's 55 years or older, um, severely disabled, victim of wildfire to take Prop 13 tax basis with them. Remember I said, you bought a house for 200 grand, now it's worth, uh, now it's worth a million bucks, okay? So Prop 19 basically says, hey, you can keep your 200 grand property tax, your 2,500 bucks property tax, buy any other million dollar house out there and still pay 2500 that is the s that's the good part of prop 19 so it's going to open the door now for more senior citizens to essentially go to you know relocate get closer to the kid um so they're not tied down to that to that same home they bought 40 years ago where they you know raised three children they're not tied down to that anymore so as a realtor this should open up a pretty big market for you to help assist the 55 and above severely disabled now they can relocate anywhere in california and carry their old property tax with them okay so just to make it simple in my example here husband and wife Buy, bought a home in Cerritos in 1990 for 200,000. That's worth 1.2 million. Okay. So someone bought a house for 200 grand. Now it's worth 1.2. They're living in Cerritos. And let's say that individual husband and wife wants to move to Huntington Beach and buy a $1.2 million house. Well, their property tax, the 2,500 bucks property tax, they will pay that low property tax of 2,500 at the Huntington Beach house. Okay. That is the good part of Prop 19. 55 years or older, you can do it three times in your lifetime. You can do it three times. You can do it you know, when you're 55 years old plus one day. You can do it at 65, 70, well, three times. Severely disabled, victim of wildfire. Okay, that's the good part of Prop 19. All right, so Prop 19 also now says, hey, you can also my Cerrito house is worth two and a grand, okay? Now so it's 1.2, but you know what the Iowa Huntington Beach house is actually 1.5. Can I do that? Yes, I can. 
now I can buy, now I can buy a more expensive home, keep my old property tax, take it with me, and I will just pay the difference, the delta, meaning the change. So let's say, for example, right now I'm um, I I bought a house for 200 grand in 1970. Now it's worth 1.2, it's worth 1.2. Okay. I'm moving and I'm buying a $1.5 million house. So I'll so I'm gonna pay my property tax on the 200 grand, okay? And the difference between 1.5 and 1.2. Okay, so now I can buy a more expensive home and still substantially benefit from this Prop 19. So it's a good thing. Okay. All right. So um I can relocate three times in my lifetime. And it's anywhere in any 58 counties in California now. The old law, Prop 60, Prop 90, was limited to 10 counties, just 10 counties. Now I can do all 58 counties. Guys, the start date is April 1st, 2021. Don't do this before April 1st of 2021, right? Um, before April 1st, 2021, you're still, so this Prop 19, the good part, this relocation for 55 older takes effect April 1st of 2021, okay? But hey, hey, I want you to consider the capital gain aspect of this. So let's say if someone, let's say if someone was bought it for 200 grand, now it's worth 1.2, they're gonna sell it and go near Huntington Beach for 1.2 house, we have to figure out the capital gain tax, okay? We've got to figure out the capital gain tax. Now there's a trick to this. There's a trick to this. I don't know if you remember or not, but those of you who have been with me for a while, I have always told you, husband and wife, when you buy a house and you don't have a trust yet, buy a new community property with right of survivorship. Okay. Remember how when you buy a house, husband and wife, you can do you can do the joint tenant or community property without survivorship. If you do community community property rights survivorship, your husband died, right? California law, husband always die first. You bought the house for two in the grand. Now it's worth 1.2 million. Your husband just passed away. Now it's worth 1.2. If you sell it for 1.2 and you vested it as community property rights survivorship, and you vested as community property rights survivorship, you will not pay any capital gain. So, so vesting makes, makes a big, big difference. I've always told you guys, husband and wife, don't do joint tenant, do community property without survivorship, then put it into your trust later, okay? So, so that's one trick part to this, okay? All right, um, so let's see here. So that is the good part. That is the good part of Prop 19 that I wanted to share with you, okay? The good part of Prop 19 I wanted to share with you, the good part, okay? The good part is for senior citizens 55 or older, the disabled, okay? For those who have been displaced by wildfire or natural disaster, okay? So Prop 19 is gonna override your Prop 60, your Prop 90, okay? All right, so um, timing-wise, timing-wise, once, once I sell my Cerritos home, I have two years, I have two years to buy a new home and take my property tax take my old $200,000 property tax with me, okay? Um, I have two years to do that, all right. Um, the other change it makes, Prop 19, the other change it made to Prop 60 and 90 is now I can buy a greater value. So my I bought my home for 200 grand, now it's worth 1.2, but I'm paying property tax on only 200 grand, right? Prop 19 says I can buy something above 1.2 if I wanted to, okay? All right, so that is the, the, the good part of Prop 19. What it gives, it takes away. Let's do the bad part of Prop 19. Let's take a look at the bad part of Prop 19. The bad part of Prop 19 is that it does away with Prop 58 and Prop 193. Do you remember Prop 58? Prop, prop, prop 58, so, so, here, so here's an example of Prop 58 on the screen, okay? Here's, so, so, oh, let's see here. Are you still able to see my screen? Let me make sure you can see my screen. 
so here's so here's an example here's an example of prop 58 oh let me see here let me go to my slide okay so um so let's see i just want to make sure you see my screen um i want to show you an example of um oh let's see so if i go here um Okay, so, so on the screen is an example of the current law, the, cur the law in California as to property tax reassessment. Parent to child is controlled by Prop 58. Mom die, the son, the daughter gets the house to retain the old property tax basis right now is governed by Prop 58. So on the screen is an example of Prop 58. Parent can leave a primary resident of any value to their children and no property tax reassessment. That's right. Right now, right now, if mom died right now, she bought the house for 200 grand. The house is worth 5 million bucks. Beautiful thing. It goes to the son, the daughter, zero reassessment. That is your Prop 58 currently. Okay. So, um, so, and then on, on rental property, it's capped at a million, a million dollar each, a rental property. So for example, mom and dad bought a home in 1970 for 200 grand. Their assess, uh, their assess value is 200,000, obviously. 50 years later, now it's worth 1.7 million. Mom and dad die. The child inherits the house. The, imagine this, Prop 58 currently says, you're getting a $1.7 million house, but your property tax is only a measly $2,500, right? Why? Because that's Prop 58. That's Prop 58. You're, you're getting a $1.7 million house for mom, a $1.7 million house for mom, but you're only paying $2,500. Fantastic deal. That's your Prop 58, okay? All right. Grandparent and grandchild, Prop 193. That's the law currently until February 15th of 2021. So, prop, how, how does Prop 19 augment this? How does Prop 19 change 58 and 193? How does it do that? All right, it basically gutted it. It gutted it, Prop 58 and Prop 93. It's no more. No more, but for a little bit. We'll get into that what a little bit is. But in essence, it, it eliminated parent to child transfer. That little bit I'm talking about, that little bit I'm talking about, they left some crumb on the table. If it's the parent primary resident, if it's the, if it's the parent primary resident and your son or daughter has to live in that house, so mom died, the son, the daughter gets this house, he or she has to live in it, right? Within one year, you got to move in to live in it, and it's capped. Is cap is cap at the assessed value plus a million. The assessed value plus a million. We'll, we'll go into an example a little bit later. Okay. And then Prop 19 says, hey, you got to file this thing within one year. It's your primary resident. You're going to move in there. You're the son, you're the daughter. You better file this thing within one year. The current law right now is three years, a long time, right? Right now, the Prop 19 says you got one year to do this. Okay, so residential rental, commercial rental, industrial rental, family vacation, mwah, kiss a goodbye. No more, bye-bye, gone. Prop 19 gutted, so <laughs> yes, Prop 19 essentially gutted Prop 13 for rental property, okay? Um, all right, so, so, so let's do an example together under Prop 19. Let's do an example together prop, under Prop 19, okay? The example you see on the screen, mom and dad bought primary home in 1970 for 200 grand. So the assessed value is gonna be 200,000, right? Let's just keep it simple. Mom bought it for 200 grand, the assessed value is 200,000. Mom died, the house was 1.7 million. Mom died, the house was 1.7 million. The child inherits the house. The child's gonna live in the house. So. Prop 19 changes the formula. Here's the formula. Here is the law of the land when February 15, 2021 comes along, okay? Here's, here's Prop 19, okay? It's mom's primary resident, mom died. The daughter gets it. The daughter's gonna make it 
her primary resident, that's hurdle number one. Okay. She files this within one year, that's hurdle number two. How do we calculate her reassessment? It's on the screen. Let's take a look at it together. Okay. The reassessment on the Prop 19, if it's primary resident, and it's going to be the child primary resident, it's capped at the assessed value plus a million. So, it, so in our example is 1.2. In our example is 1.2. How did we arrive? How did we arrive at that? So, so the value, the the so anything over 1.2 is reassessed. So, for example, the child assessed value now is 200 grand plus 500,000. How how did I get 500,000? Is 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 1.7? is 1.7 minus 1.2. Um, so basically the child new assessed value is 700,000. So her so the property tax is gonna change to 8750, whereas mom was paying only 2,500, okay? So, so that is an example under Prop 19, okay? So, so let me just do the calculation real fast for you guys. If you guys can see the board, how did I get 700,000 by doing this? So mom, assess value. I don't know if you can see this, probably not, but hmm, um, probably not, but, that, but that's okay. Let me go back to, um, let me go back to my screen. Okay, let me go back to my screen. So, so, so look at my look at the screen. This is the calculation now. Now, 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 now. Why am I taking the time to show you this complicated formula? Why? So you can have an understanding. Hey, if you wanted to take advantage of the old profit big, do it now before 215. Because after 215. February 15th of 2021, this is what you're subject to, okay? So let's do this example together again on the screen, okay? You ready? This is Prop 19. This is Prop 19. Mom and dad bought the house for $200,000, okay? When mom and dad dies, it was 1.7. The, the son or daughter owns inherits the house and move into the house, okay? So now the assessed value is going to change even though his mom his dad gave it to him her it's going to change okay this the the do, the son or daughter new assessed value on that primary resident the assessed value is seven hundred thousand dollars how do i how do i get seven thousand dollars look at the screen guys look look at the screen okay it's basically it's basically this do you remember that two hundred thousand dollars that get mom bought for two hundred grand? So that two hundred grand gets carried over, plus a million. So now it's one point two. The house value is one point seven. So it's one point seven minus one point two. That's the delta. That's the change. It's five hundred grand plus mom old basis of two hundred thousand. So two hundred plus five hundred gives you that seven hundred thousand dollars. Okay. So that's the new assessed value. Um, you know, I'm, I'm recording this. I will make it available somewhere on the website. So just, just, just come back to this, plug in the formula, you'll see. Just remember, whatever mom O assessed value is, plus a million bucks, okay? That is, is not gonna get reassessed. So the assessed value plus a million, you're good, you're fine. Anything over above that gets reassessed. So in our example, in 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 our example, mom bought it for two hundred thousand. When mom dies, it was one point seven. So we take two hundred plus the million is one point two. The house was one point seven. One point seven minus one point two is five hundred. We take that five hundred. We add it to mom old base of two hundred. The child new assessment is five hundred plus two hundred is seven hundred thousand. Okay. All right. So. That's the calculation. Pretty complicated? Yes, but just come back to this slide, okay? All right. Hey guys, don't make this mistake. 
this is a half a million dollar mistake. Don't make this mistake. Your mom is elderly. You try and try and try. You just cannot take care of her anymore. So you move her to an assisted living home. You move her to an, an you move her to an assist, uh, assisted living home. Is no longer her primary resident. She dies. You don't get Prop 19 at all because it's not her primary resident. Because remember, Prop 19 narrows the game. Prop 19 says you get to pass only one house to your child. That's it's got to be your primary primary resident. Your child has to live in it. It's got to be her primary resident. Okay. So if you move mom out of her primary residence to a rental place to an assisted living, you have you have destroyed that first prong that has to be mom or dad's primary resident. Okay. Don't commit that mistake. You're gonna pay for it dearly. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so 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 let's let's take a look at some planning. Let's take a look at some planning that we might do. Some planning that we might do to preserve our prop 58, okay? What are some planning we, we might do, okay? All right, so I showed you the good. The good was, hey, it's gonna open up more inventory. You can now be able to help your senior citizens, 55 older, to move out of their house, buy a new house. That's the good part. The bad part, Ah, uh, you own rental property you want to pass to your kid. Ah, uh, your client owns rental property that they, what can they do to prevent reassessment? Okay, let's look at that now. Let's, let's, let's look at that now, okay? So number one, you can give to your children now. We'll, we'll, we'll deep dive into that. Number two, do nothing. Do nothing. Yeah, do nothing. We'll, we'll get into that, okay? Going forward, buy directly into an LLC. We'll get into that, okay? Or the fourth thing you might want to do is put into an irrevocable trust, a grantor trust. If this is not your, your regular revocable living trust. It's got to be an irrevocable grantor trust, okay? All right. Let's take a look at this. So let's say you want to give it to your children, okay? You say, hey, Paul, hey, Paul, Prop 19 takes, Prop 19 comes into effect, 215, 2021. Hey, Paul. Profit they still rule the land. Profit they still rule the land. Let's do it now. Let's give it to our kid. Fine, you can do that. But but let's let's understand other repercussion if you do that. Okay. If you give it to your children now, which is fine, they can lock in Prop 58, no property tax reassessment, right? That's fine. But remember how, for those of you who's been with me for a while, I've always taught you no step up basis, no step up basis, right? What does step up basis mean? You bought the house for 200,000. Now the house is 1.2. You die and your son or daughter sells it for 1.2 million. There's no capital gain. That's a step up basis. You give it to your kid now, there's not gonna be a step up basis. Your kid's gonna carry over that $200,000 step up basis there's no step up basis if you give your real estate to your kid now so that's one downsize of um giving it now to beat prop 19 okay um and remember when you give it to your kid you lose control right your child gets married right the divorce rate in california is like 50 percent. so you might open the door to lose it in, a, in your child's divorce lawsuit, bankruptcy, and so forth. Um, the majority of us probably don't have to worry about the estate tax. When you give something away, the IRS, the, the IRS has the limit. You, you can only give away per person less than 11.58 million, okay? Um, I understand that during Biden's campaign or President-elect Biden, he might drop that 11.58 to 3.5 million. I don't know, we'll see, okay? All right. Um, gifted it away, gifted it away. Just keep it in mind. Your client, if they, if, if, if mom and dad bought the house as, as community property for 200 grand because it's community property, okay? 
now it's worth three million, but but dad die, mom gets a hundred percent step of the three million. That would work. That would work, but it would have to be that the house was vested as community property, as community property. Okay, we'll write out survivorship to get that. Okay, so. Um, Oh, damn, Paul, this sounds so complicated. You know, my children, they don't, they don't want to be landlord anyway. They don't want to live in California anyway. In that case, don't do anything. Do nothing. Do nothing. If you think your children is going to put the house on sale the very next day, your heart start stop beating, don't do anything. Okay, right? Why? Because if your children doesn't, has no intent to keep the rental property or live in the house, don't do anything. Because when you die, they get to step up basis. They sell the house. Therefore, Prop 19 is not going to affect them in the property tax reassessment. Okay. All right. Remember, Prop 19 takes effect February 15. February 15 is the deceiving date. February 15 is, 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 is the deceiving date. Here, here's why, guys. Here's why. There are certain, oh, let me see. There are certain, um, there are certain holidays and, and, and February 15th, February 15th happened to be a uh, president day. February 15th is president day. So for example, February 15th is uh, the county record is closed. February 15th is a Monday, right? And then February 14th, they're closed. February 13th is a Saturday. So really February the 12th is the drop dead day to do any changes, February the 12th, okay? All right. so. Um, let now for those of you who are real estate investor, who's going to buy more property, don't let Prop 19 stop you. Here's what I want you to do going forward, going forward. Here's a trick I want you to do going forward, guys, going forward. Here's, here's, here's what I want you to do going, um, forward, um, going forward. You can do this you can buy a property directly into your LLC. Look at the screen, okay? Going forward, buy your property under an LLC. Do you buy under your name, you put it into the LLC? No, it's gotta be directly under the LLC, meaning the grand deed from day one is under the LLC, okay? So let's say, for example, going forward, you buy a property directly under the LLC, four million bucks, you die with three million, your three children now acquires a one third interest each, there's no change in ownership because no one child owns more than 50%. This is the way to beat Prop 19 going forward. For additional property that you're gonna buy, put into an LLC, put into an LLC, put into an LLC, right? So like I said, the example again, let me repeat, it must go directly in your LLC. It cannot be under your name and then the LLC. It's got to be directly under your LLC. You bought it for a million bucks. When you die, it's worth three million. You have three children. It all goes to them a third, a third, a third. A third, a third, a third is less than 50%. Therefore, it does not trigger the change of ownership. Therefore, no property tax reassessment. Paul, I only have one child. I only have one son. I don't have three kids in your example. Fine, fine. You give your son 48%. You give your lovely daughter-in-law 48%. And maybe your, your grandson gets 4%. No property tax reassessment because the ownership did not change more than 50%. So LOC is a nifty way going forward, okay? The last option, do it before February 15th of 2021 is maybe you can put it in some sort of grand tour irrevocable trust. Okay. But that's pretty complicated. That's a very fancy trust. That is okay. That that's just a different level of planning, a grand tour irrevocable trust. Okay. All right. So, so that is sort of the rundown of prop 19 that I wanted to get out there first before I start taking questions. Okay, before I start taking questions. All right. Okay, so let's see here. Um, 